To be blatantly honest at this point, I'm not entirely sure what to make of the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid has been playing out of his mind all season and is easily one of the most valuable players in the league. A true seven footer that continues to push the limitations of what should be possible at his size. James Harden when he's playing at his best has the ability to look like one of the top offensive players to ever touch a basketball. I know the Houston days are a ways away but as an H-Town resident, I'll never forget. Some people like to act as if there's bad blood but if you ask me, I think that he put on for the city and gave Houston everything that he had. Philly has Joel, Harden, and an emerging star in Tyrese Maxey. And they've also got Doc Rivers. While Doc has been a problem, their issues go far beyond Doc. When Harden landed in Philly, he set his sights on a championship. While his championship vision would be 2020, his path is seemingly anything but that. Some of those same problems that plagued Harden in Brooklyn now plague him in Philadelphia. The thing about Philly though, is that they've shown the ability to be resilient. When it comes to Philadelphia, what are your expectations for them for these NBA playoffs? The Doc Rivers experience is one like I've never seen before. A few weeks ago, we had Doc Rivers blaming James Harden for the struggles of what at the time was a mediocre bench unit. He said that Harden wasn't passing the ball enough and didn't really give guys a chance to find their rhythm. The funny thing was that he said this after making it clear that he likes the aggressive James Harden the best. As I stated earlier, when James Harden is cooking, it feels as if he's flat out unstoppable. But when he's not getting calls, the first step isn't there, and the step back isn't falling, things can become loathsome. A few years ago, I watched Harden go frigid live. It was kind of crazy. With every miss, I could feel the crowd growing more and more restless. This was somebody that broke record after record in Houston. This man had a ridiculous carry after ridiculous carry. So watch a crowd and a team get taken out of a game like that was surreal. In my opinion, that game was one of the first signs that the Harden era in Houston was coming to an end. Harden's struggles in Philly have been weird because it's all relative. In 21 games in Philadelphia, Harden averaged 21 points, 10.5 assists, and 7.1 rebounds. He shot 40.2% from the field and 32.6% from three. To make everything all the more confusing, he carried a 60.1 true shooting percentage. If Harden carried a 60.1 true shooting percentage for the duration of the 2021-2022 season, he'd be in the top 30 for true shooting percentage. These numbers might not blow anybody away for James Harden, but for a lot of players, averaging a near triple-double on 60% true shooting would be legit. A lot of people expected Harden to flip a switch when he got to Philadelphia, myself included, but so far his numbers are eerily similar. Harden's 37.7 minutes per game logged in Philly are the most minutes per game that he's logged since the 2015-2016 season. So much for taking on a lighter load, huh? In Harden's last five games to close the regular season, he's been much more of a playmaker than a scorer, averaging 15.8 points, 13.2 assists, and 5.8 rebounds on 36% from the field. I guess Doc Rivers is kind of getting his wish, right? The good news for Philadelphia is that I honestly don't think they need Houston Harden like everybody else does. I'm sure H-Town Harden is still in there somewhere, but personally, I feel like Harden holds a lot of value as a playmaker that's a threat to go off on any given night. If Joel continues his reign of domination, Maxi continues to hoop, and they get big games from some of their role players like Paul Reed, Harden just has to be good, not great. This is such a weird take, because I don't think that Philly is one of the deeper teams in the league at all, but yet I still feel like they have the talent to overcome. This season, Joel became the first center to win a scoring title since Shaquille O'Neal. For a big, he has one of the most complete games that I've ever seen. I'm not sure there's a player in the league that's flat out capable of shutting him down. Philly fans, down in the comments below, let me know who Embiid's toughest matchup has been. That's something that I actually want to look into for my next Philadelphia 76er video. Last season, the 76ers were closer than a lot of people thought, in large part due to Joel, who to be real, wasn't even close to being healthy for the entirety of the playoffs. So we've already went over some of the good news. Let's move to the bad news. The bad news is that despite the versatile 6'9 Paul Reed having a smooth 25.6 rebound and 4 steal outing to close the season, 
Doc would still not green light him taking rotation minutes away from DJ, who has left a lot to be desired. Honestly, if I'm the Philadelphia 76ers at this point, I'm thinking about calling up Joachim Noah to see what he's doing, because effort like this is not going to cut it in a playoff game. On this play, DJ looks like me after my fifth game at LA Fitness. Effort like this has unfortunately become a common theme. Coming out of college, NBADraft.net compared B-Ball Paul to Christian Wood. Reed does a little of everything on the floor, while having a much more consistent motor. Effort matters. Look at what Pat Bev was able to do for Minnesota against Los Angeles. I'm not a Pat Bev fan, but I respect the intensity. Like PG said, it's contagious. For a bench unit that has struggled for parts of the season, Paul could end up being a major spark if used correctly. I really can't believe that NBA on TNT, forget NBA on TNT, pretty much everybody on NBA Twitter joked on the Minnesota Timberwolves for celebrating that play and win. Wolves fans, I'm glad you guys are in the playoffs. Well deserved. Now I need you guys to brace yourselves for this quote, because even I can't believe that Doc Rivers said this. After Paul Reed's 25, Doc would be asked about the potential of Paul Reed playing more. Doc's response? We're not going on a Paul Reed victory tour. We're trying to win a championship. Hopefully this is just Doc not revealing his hand and keeping the ultimate poker face. To continue the quote, I got a feeling that Joel will be playing more unless you want us to sit him, so I don't get too caught up in that kind of stuff. At face value, I feel that Doc's words were a bit harsh. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Imagine you're Paul Reed, you have this nice game, you go 12 or 14 from the field, and you hear that you're not going on a victory tour from your coach. I think that Doc is stubborn, but I don't think that he's that stubborn. I think that there's a chance that we see some viable Paul Reed minutes going forward. To add to the bad news, Thibault is ineligible to play in Toronto. The Toronto Raptors just so happen to be a team with unbelievable wing depth. At this time, it's also not as if the 76ers are currently loaded with viable wing defenders. I don't think that Nick Nurse and the Toronto Raptors are going to let Doc Rivers off the hook. In other words, Doc is really going to have to coach. I really didn't show Toronto the amount of love that they deserve this season, and that's going to change because I love what they've built. Their wings are long, they're versatile, they're athletic, and they also have a game changer at the point guard position. It's going to be really interesting to see how Thibault is used in this series. He's a very limited offensive player, but has shown the ability to be an impactful defender. Does his very limited offense offset any impact that he may have defensively? He's often left open and his impact may be a bit overrated. The 76ers are going to have to find ways to get stops. Joel Embiid can only be as big of a band-aid as the 76ers allow him to. The 76ers have a lot to prove, but it doesn't have to happen this year as long as Murray is able to retool the roster in the offseason and Harden is able to get back some of his explosiveness. If Doc isn't able to get it done, I really hope that Maury is able to bring in his own guy eventually. I saw this report today and I really didn't want to include it in the video, but apparently Durant was astonished by Harden's lack of explosiveness and sluggish play. And all of the problems started when Harden showed up to training camp out of shape. I don't know guys, do you believe this report? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop bringing you guys the scoop. Until our next upload.